move. Hallelujah. There it is. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, wake up your praise. Praise the Lord, everybody. Wake up your praise. Praise the Lord, everybody. Wake up your praise. Praise the Lord, everybody. Go ahead and shake off everything that you've encountered this day, everything that you've encountered this week. Go ahead and shake it off and wake up your praise. Praise the Lord, everybody. He's been too good to sit on them. He's been too good to sit on them. Hallelujah. He's been too good for you to be quiet. He's been too good for you to be stiff. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Lift up your hands, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up the everlasting door, and the King of glory shall come in. Praise the Lord, everybody. We want him to come in. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We came together for one main reason, and that's to give God the glory, honor, and praise. Because doesn't he deserve it? Hallelujah. He woke us up this morning. We were clothed in our right mind. Sometimes we look at those things and we don't realize how much of a blessing that is. But if you take a look down there in the nursing homes and in the hospitals where people have to dress them, people have to bathe them, there are things that they need in order to move about. They have to be put in the, in the wheelchairs. They have to be put here and put there. You gotta move me so I can get here. You gotta move me so I can get there. So the fact that we are able to walk into this sanctuary today, to give God the praise for what he's done for us, for what he's doing for us. That's a blessing in itself. So I'm going to say it one more time. Hallelujah. And I want you to stand up on your feet with me today. Hallelujah. And I want you to give God your best praise. Lift your hands. Rise your head back.
Hallelujah. I'm going to read the scripture and then I'm going to hand it over to Minister Bajon. Hallelujah. I'll be coming from Romans, the 8th chapter, the 28th verse. And we know that all things, good and bad, work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are to, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I read Romans the 8th chapter, the 28th verse, and the word of the Lord is already blessed. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your presence that is even here right now, God. We ask that as we begin to go through the service, God, that your presence would intensify in this place, God. That you would make yourself known to us on tonight, God. God, deposit whatever it is that we need in this building on today, God. Bless everyone that is here, those that are watching by live. God, we ask now, God, that you would have your way in this place. God, bless Minister Julian as he teaches the word on tonight. God, we're here for you and you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you are ready to lift God a little further? Hallelujah. Let's lift him up a little more.
tonight. All you have to do is extend yourself and get it. Extend yourself and get it. Reach out to him because he's reaching back to you. Reach out to him because he's reaching back to you. And once you begin to connect, he can begin to exchange what it is that you have for what you need. God, I came in heaven, but I'm going to leave out light. God, I came in confused in mind, but I'm going to leave with clarity. God, I came in and my heart may have been burdened, but I'm going to leave lifted because you are the lifter. 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 And you came to pick us up. You came to lift us. You came to exchange with us what we have for what we need. You are the exchanger, the great exchange. You do all things well. And so, God, we're going to reverence your presence because you're here, God. You're here, God. And when you come, you don't come empty-handed. 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 You give the best gifts. 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 All you want in exchange is a thank you, a thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate what you're doing. I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for what you're getting ready to do. I thank you for what you came to do. I thank you for what's getting ready to happen. I thank you for being my lifter, my burden bearer, my heavy load sharer. God, we thank you. God. We thank you. You gave us this breath. We breathe in your name. When we breathe out, it's your name. And since you 
you gave us this breath, we're going to give it back to you. We're going to pour out our praise on you. We're going to pour out our worship on you. We're going to pour out our love on you. We're going to pour out our gratitude on you. We're going to pour out our appreciation on you. We're going to give it to you because you're worthy of it. You deserve all of this and more. You deserve all of this and more. All of this and more. All of this and more. God, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We just came to pour out our love on tonight. Because you are the best gift giver in the world. You never come empty handed. And you never take it back. It's your breath, it's your breath, and I long, so we pour, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath, and I long, so we pour, it's your breath.
He alone is worthy of our adoration. And with your hands lifted, will you speak a sound to him that echoes how you feel about the God you serve? Lord, we esteem you worthy. Lord, we esteem you worthy. There's no other word to describe you, God, except that you are worthy. Come on, talk to her. There's no other word to describe your attributes except that you are. Let a worship rise out of that. You are worthy. All of our accomplishments, all of our achievements, they don't speak to our goodness, but they speak to the fact that you, Lord, are worthy. You're worthy. Hey, you're worthy, Jesus. I need to hear the sound of worship in the house. You're worthy, Jesus. Worship him until something breaks free in you. You're worthy, Jesus. We esteem you and we ascribe you for what you are worthy. Ah, I feel it in the room. We call you what you are. You're worthy. Let it flow out of you. We declare shallow that you are worthy. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. We declare that you are worthy, Jesus. Of all of our thanksgiving, of all of our praise, you're worthy of our worship. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our worship. Like a drink offering, we pour it out. We pour it out. Let that thing flow out of you. We pour it out. Come on, we pour. Oh, shout out my heart. We pour it out. We pour it out. Come on, let it flow out. We pour it out. Hey, shout out on my heart. Because you're worthy. We pour. 
shall not go home. You are shani osana. You are the shell of a horse. You are the shanadaya. Put yourself aside for a second and lift up worship to your God. You are the Jesus. Hey, rebe bebe, she can let me on see a bit. Pour it out, 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 pour it out. Pour shana. Come on, come on, come on. let it flow. Come on, let it flow out of the house tonight. Kushane, ya na 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 ya. Oh, shalabaya. Let it flow out of the house tonight. Yes, shane, oh, siana. Let it flow out of the house tonight. Yes, shane, na 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 let it flow out of the house tonight. Let it flow out of the house tonight. From a grateful heart. Oh, Shana. From a grateful heart. You are the shallow horse. You are the. I see a lot of you are still sitting, and that's all right. But let a worship flow out of you. You are the Shana. Kushbahatianda. Korea ba sikere ni osh you earned it oh you earned it hey hey create a space create a space for his presence create a space for his glory create a space for his power create a space shade kushbaharia kushbane lebes create a space Create a space, hey! Create a space! This is our time of prayer. So you can stay right there. This is our time of prayer. And tonight I want you to come to this altar with an expectancy. Knowing that God is able to do all things and he will. I want you to come to this altar tonight realizing that the ground is fertile. And God is ready to receive your seed. Come to this altar tonight. You can come now. Come to this altar tonight with a new expectancy. Mighty God. Bless you, Lord. 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 
Bless you, Lord Jesus. Bless you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you tonight. God, we thank you that you have not abdicated your role as God. So, Lord, we come before you, God, in a manner of humility, realizing and recognizing that we'll never be worthy enough to stand before you. But, Lord, then we come in that boldness that the scripture says that we're able to come boldly before the throne of grace because you've already made the way. You've already opened the door. And so, Lord, some are seated. Some are at the altar. Some are not even here. They're just watching online. But regardless of where we stand, God, we thank you that you stand with us. God, we realize that regardless of where we are standing, where we are seated, whether it be here or there, Lord, we thank you tonight that you are with us. Ha, shana. God, we thank you tonight, Lord, that your presence is all around us. And I pray, God, uh, that you will make us more aware of your presence in the room tonight. Oh, God, I pray tonight, Lord, that you will surround us with your glory in such a way, God, that we feel, we feel the very nuance of your power. I pray tonight, Lord Jesus, that for somebody, their situation has become their lifestyle. But I pray tonight, God, that you will be that yoke destroyer, that you will be that burden lifter, that you will be that heavy load sharer. I pray tonight, Lord, that for somebody that's in the valley of decisions, God, that you will help them to make it through. I pray tonight, Lord, that for somebody that's saying, God, I just want to know you. I just want to know you deeper. Lord, that you will answer that prayer and reveal yourself to them in a mightier way. I pray tonight, God, that you will open up for somebody. Open up that understanding to your will. Come on and help me pray, church. Open up that understanding, Lord, to what you are saying and what you desire. Open up that understanding, Lord, to that that you are doing even in the earth in the name of Jesus Lord I pray tonight God that you will be and you will answer that rescue call Lord for somebody is crying saying Lord save me Lord deliver me and I pray tonight God that you will be their answer that you will be their solution that you, hey, that you will be God their rescue I pray tonight Lord that you will open up to us a new realm of glory a new realm of your power a new realm of your spirit Lord that we will not enter with hardened hearts that we will not enter with stubborn minds but God as you prepare us as you propel us as you launch us into a new dimension I pray God even now God that you'll bring us into a place of obedience with thee that you'll bring us hey shato that you'll bring us into a place of obedience with thee that you'll bring us into a place of intimacy with thee oh god make us over today make us righteous again renew us again restore the joy of our salvation restore the joy of our salvation restore my name who shall dare be your son? Restore the joy of our salvation. God, give us victory in places where we were defeated. God, give us victory in places where we were stuck. God, give us victory in places where we felt defeated. Oh, God, do it for us tonight. Oh, Lord, do it for us tonight. tonight that you will do it for your name's sake.
Lord, as those that surround this altar cry out to you, I pray, Lord, that you will come and answer according to thy will. Lord, that you will come and answer according to your power. That you will come and answer according to your excellent greatness. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we give you glory. Lord, we give you honor. Lord, we give you thanksgiving because we know that you still answer prayer. All over this place, will you give God a thunderous praise with your hands? With your hand and with your mouth, give him a thunderous praise. Give him a thunderous praise. The windows of heaven are open and the fire is falling tonight. I've got joy, joy in my soul. Since Jesus made everything all right, I gave up my old filthy garments and he gave me a robe. That's why I'm happy. That's me. I ain't trying to start nothing, but that's why I'm happy. That's why. That's why. I said I gave up my own building up. And he gave me a rope. I'm feasting, I'm feasting, I'm feasting. Grab your Bibles, we're going to the Word. I'm feasting. Shadala Mahatia, a manna from heaven. And that's why. Woo! Ha! Woo! Hey! Shalom, God! Deacon Delight, I'm feasting. He can never I'm peaceful. And this joy I have. It's not all right now, but he's making it all right. Okay, I'm I ain't gonna do it tonight. I dare you, I dare you, if you're not scared or drunk, prophesy to somebody and tell them God's gonna make it all right. Now, I, I, 
I hear the Holy Ghost. I hear the Holy Ghost, and I'm going to teach. You need to make sure you have the right neighbor because when you tell them something is going to leap in you and something is going to leap, find the right neighbor and look at him and say, neighbor, he's making it all right. Tell him it's by his word. to this row right here that if you dance quickly God is going to fix everything in your household ha! Ha!
Every time I look up, I just... Somebody said, what you looking at? I'm looking at waves of glory. For these light afflictions, they work for us, are more excellent. I didn't go through for nothing. There's another way to glory. There's another way. There's another way to glory. Another way to glory. Lord Jesus. Another way to glory. Repeat this after me, and we're going to the word. But I hear this in my spirit. It says, Do it, Lord, 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 in the name of Jesus, do it, Lord, right now, do it, Lord. There's affliction, do it, Lord, there's affliction, do it, Lord, right now, God, right now, God, right now. tell you that you've been coming to church, but you've been coming heavy. Uh, and it seemed like, you know, you praise them and stuff, saying, Lord, if I praise you, lift this heaviness off of me. Uh, but God told me to say the heaviness, the heaviness that you carry really has nothing to do with you, but more so the weight of your assignment. Uh, I believe that God is birthing prayer warriors in this season, and you hold a seat so when you feel that weight on you, it's really a burden to pray. But I declare unto you today that God is going to reveal himself to you in a new manner. I ain't going to lay hands on you. But God is going to reveal himself to you in a new manner in such a way that the glory of the Lord is going to be radiant. To people around you are going to see, all they see is glory. When people look upon you, they're not going to see your past. They're not going to identify you by your mistakes, but they're going to identify you as a glory carrier. 
If you dance for anything, dance for the word. If you dance for anything, don't praise him for a car or a house, but praise him because it's by his word. It's by his word. It's over your head.
it's over. See, see, some people don't believe. Some people don't believe because they don't see the possibility of God shifting them from broke to rich, from depressed to free. See, some people don't believe in that possibility because their dysfunction has become their new normal. But we serve the type of God that turns graves into gardens. We serve the type of God that parts seas and makes some highways. He spoke one word and the earth was created. So by one word, he can change your situation. And so, as we transition to this teaching, thank you. I want you to declare this out of your mouth. Lord, I praise you because you're changing my situation by one word. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Don't play it because I sing it. <laughs> by one word. Genesis chapter 3. Verses, um, I want to look at verse 2, and I'm going to kind of read from there. And the woman said unto the serpent, this is Eve, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God has said, God commanded us, this was the first commandment God ever made, gave man. Well, actually, no, it was the second. The first was be fruitful. Anyways, uh, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you're not going to die. For God knows that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good, not to her spirit, but for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, it was good for the flesh, and it was pleasant to the eye, uh, and the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband. Amen. And he did eat as well. Verse 7. We almost finished. And the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made of themselves aprons. You can stop right there. Uh, I want to deal with or teach tonight from something that the Lord has pressed upon my heart. Uh, first of all, can we thank God tonight for our senior pastor? Uh, amen. Amen. I'm so grateful that he afforded me this opportunity. Uh, I feel like every time I get up here, I'm screaming at y'all. I never just get to talk. <laughs> I never just get to talk. But tonight, uh, let's have a conversation about the garden's lesson. That's what I want to talk about. The garden's lesson. Uh, the garden's lesson. I don't think we can read Genesis 3 um, and not think about the weight that sin has on humanity. Because uh, when we look at, you know, sin and even... Um, one author has subscribed that sin has a noetic effect. In other words, the more we sin, the more it brings division uh, between us and God. Uh, and we always look at sin as the nature of man, the nature of humanity. Um, but as believers, we should never see our sin as bondage because God has already provided for us a way of escape. 
Um, and I'm going to I'm going to make my way through here, but I really want to deal with this uh, because I want you to understand tonight that Genesis three paints a picture for us of something that's very interesting. Um, first of all, the serpent, which is Satan, comes to Eve. He does not come to Adam. I looked at it and I was like, well, why? Like, you know, I was just thinking maybe it's just because, you know, she was a woman. I don't know. Uh, but then I looked at it and I realized that um, Eve heard the word of the Lord. Adam held the word of the Lord. God spoke to Adam. He said, do not eat of the tree. Adam received specific instructions. And so uh, when we deal with the idea of sin, when we deal with the danger of sin, one of the first things Satan will do is he will try to wage war against the word. Um, so, for instance, uh, you know, the scripture says, you know, we, we always preach against fornication. The scripture says you shouldn't touch it. Um, one of the first things Satan will do is be like, well, I mean, is it really a sin? <laughs> and I mean, is it really? And now the word clearly outlines it. It's written. It's right there. You know, if you read the book of Galatians, chapter 5, is chapter 5, verses 19, it talks about the works of the flesh, all of them are outlined. Um, but but he will wage war against the word and be like, is, is that really what, the, or he'll go further, is that really what that means? Because, you know, you got to look at the times, and, and, and th that's what he'll do. He really will. And so uh, when we look at Genesis 3, we see that in action. He wages war against the word. He comes to Eve. He says, Eve, um, you can surely eat of this tree. And see, here's the danger of allowing yourself to get in places where you are more uh, vulnerable to listen to Satan. Um, you become a victim of uh, deception. And deception is when something is true but not in the context that it's presented. Uh, Satan comes to Eve and says, you know, the day that you eat from this tree, God told you you were going to die. You're not going to die. Uh, you can eat from the tree because then you're going to have knowledge. And what he said wasn't wrong. It just wasn't right. It wasn't right in that God had already gave the command. God had already laid out, you know, uh, what was not to be done. And I do believe, and I mean, you know, we can debate. I do believe that eventually God would have permitted them uh, to eat from that tree later on uh, once they came into a deeper knowledge and understanding of God. And so he comes to Eve. He says, um, don't, uh, or you can eat from the tree. It's okay. You know. Um, and you're not going to die. And so what she does is she eats from the tree and she tells Adam, you know, the, the serpent in the garden told me that everything was fine. So we good. Um, and, and I looked at that and I was like, how many times do we play with destiny? How many times do we linger with destiny by making decisions that are deceptive. I mean, the Holy Ghost will quicken you and tell you, you shouldn't do that. And, and you wrestle with God. Because you know, we always talk, the Bible says, quench not the Holy Ghost. Uh, quenching the Holy Ghost does not just deal with in church. But quenching the Holy Ghost means that when God gives you a word, um, because God knows the parameter. I'm just talking. God knows the parameters that we all have. Some of us, that's why, Zach, some people, you know, they can go party and sin and do all of these things, but God might not give you that grace or that parameter because he knows if you get too far out there <laughs> and if you do come back, it's going to be difficult. And so he gives us these, <laughs> he gives us these, these parameters. And so when we talk about quench not the Holy Ghost, uh, really what we're saying is obey the spirit of the Lord uh, as he leads. 
Obey the Spirit of the Lord as he is walking. I hope I'm making sense tonight. Obey the Spirit of the Lord as he's giving you direction. Some of us try to walk ahead of God, and then we get upset when God lets us walk ahead of him. We, we, we go before the Lord in our decisions. We go before the Lord in the things that we do. We go apply for jobs, and then we pray about getting them. We go try to buy cars, and then we pray about keeping them. All of these things, but the scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom. Hmm? Seek ye first the kingdom. And so, uh, when I looked at Genesis 3, I saw a, a picture of humanity. Like, you know, we are those people in the garden. God places us in a place where we're protected. God places us in a place where we are covered. God places us in a place where we're in covenant with him because before, before Genesis chapter 3, Adam and Eve were walking around in the garden without clothes on because they were clothed in righteousness. And so before sin enters the picture, we were in tranquility with God. And so, of course, you know, the fallen man, they sin. But Elder Bijan preached something, uh, I believe it was about a year or so ago, and I really want to deal with that tonight. Let's look at verse 8, uh, Genesis 3 and 8. And I am almost finished, actually. Genesis 3 and 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking. Now, some theologians say that God was walking through the garden. Some say the word of the Lord came walking through the garden. Regardless of if it was God or the word, uh, both being, you know, him, he came through the garden. And so uh, they heard the voice of the Lord. They heard the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife, what's that word? Hid. Hmm. Now, prior to this, they never hid. From God prior to this they never uh, because hiding suggests that you are in a state where God cannot look upon you hiding suggests that you've now entered a state where you realize if God looks upon you he will not see a reflection of himself and so they hid you know Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God amongst the trees. Now, the day then is much different than it is now, but if you look at that, they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. We come into the house of God and sometimes we are a reluctant to enter into that holy place, reluctant to enter into that place of worship because of the guilt, the shame, the weight, of our sin, the weight of our transgression, the weight of our, well, uh, y'all know last night I was, <laughs> what stuff did y'all do? Because I'm horrible at coming up with examples. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to answer. Anyways, <laughs> um, but we're reluctant to dive into the presence of the Lord because in a sense we feel we're not worthy. Let's look at verse 8. I know it takes a minute. because Oh, I'm sorry. Verse 9. I am so sorry. <laughs> and the Lord called out to Adam, the one he gave the word to. That's who he called out to. I want you to tell somebody you are responsible for walking out the word that God gave you. Not just, God gave me a word. God gave me a word. God gave me a word. Walk it out. Not just when it's convenient. Oh, I know what I see. But the word of the Lord. The word. No, no, no. Walk it out. Even when it's <laughs> uncomfortable. Walk it out. Let's look at, um, I'm coming back to this. But I actually want to look at another scripture. Psalms 1 and 1. 
I can tell you what it says, but I'm going to the screen. Psalms 1 and 1. Psalms 1 and 1. If you get there uh, before, and I know it takes a minute, and can we thank God for the media team? <laughs> Blessed is the man that walketh hmm, not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law doth he meditate day and night. Stay right there for a second. So when we talk about walking out the word of God, it is literally the embodiment of the scripture. His delight is in the law of the Lord. In other words, he finds joy. And when we look at that word law right there, that word law is not the law of condemnation. But it is he finds joy in the commandments of God. And in those commandments, he the scripture says meditate, but he rehearses over and over and over again. He rehearses. And so walking out the word of the Lord is um, walking out the word of the Lord is um, when the guilt of sin is on you. And I'm not giving anybody an excuse to sin. But when the guilt of sin is on you, especially for things that you know God has delivered you from. Walking out that word is now, therefore, there is no condemnation to those that walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Walking out that word is sickness being in your body, but declaring healing is the children's bread. Even when, it's, even when it looks like the total opposite, you still got to walk it out. All right, let's go back to Genesis 3 because I'm almost finished. Uh, Genesis 3 verse, I think it was verse nine. Thank you. Thank you. Genesis three and nine. And I'm almost done. I hope uh, you all are being blessed tonight. I'm, I'm going somewhere with this because the, the garden's lesson, I'm going to show y'all something. The garden's lesson is actually mind blowing if you think about it. Uh, but we're going to get there. We're going to get there and then we're going to take a little offering and go home. Thank the Lord. Genesis three and nine. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said, Adam, where are you? And, you know, the King James says, where art thou? Uh, let's go to verse 10. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. This, this is entirely new all because Adam already had a revelation that he had sinned against God. Let's look at verse 11. And this is the Lord talking. He asked him, he said, who told you, Bijan preached it so profoundly, who told you? Who have you had conversation with? Who have you been in the presence of, absent of God, that has now told you that you are exposed, that you are naked. Who told you? Who has uh, robbed you of your righteousness? Hmm. Who has robbed you of your inheritance? Who told you? But because God is God, he says, did you eat from the tree? Because that's the only way you would know. It's in the scripture. That's the only way you would know. Wherefore, I commanded thee that thou should not eat. This is the lesson of the garden that I want to reveal to you. And then I'm going uh, to my seat. What would because we know what happens after this, they're, they're kicked out of the garden. But what would have happened if Adam, instead of blaming his wife, if he would have repented? What if Adam would have said, Lord, you told us not to eat from the tree, we ate of the tree, we are sorry. What if he would have repented? 
this is not a call to condemnation because that's not the God we serve. This is not a call to damnation, but rather this is the lesson of the garden that we are to turn from sin. I feel the Lord. Turn from wickedness. Anything that separates us, brings us out of relationship with God, that's what he wants us to turn from. If it separates, let nothing separate you from the love of God. No height, no high place, no place that you ascend to in success, no depth, no low place. Because, you know, sometimes you can go through so much to the point that you don't even feel like seeking or going after God anymore. Let none of these things separate you from God. We go through the rest of the Bible walks out, you know, the different things as a result of man's decision. But, uh, Chaz, I'm closing. But what if Adam would have repented? What if Adam would have asked the Lord right then and there, Lord, I know that I sinned against you, but I ask you to forgive me. He wouldn't have to live in the regret of disobedience. He wouldn't have to live in the shame of being cast out of the garden by simply a decision. Because, I mean, that's where it all starts, a decision. A decision. God never commanded men to be perfect. He just asked us to be obedient. Obedient to his word. And so, um, if you don't gather anything else from this TED talk, uh, I want you to know tonight that you are free from the bondage of guilt and shame. You are free from the bondage of sin. And so, because you know, I used to think about it, okay, if we're free from sin, why do we still sin? And then I realized sin is the nature of man, so that's something we'll always long to do. So daily, we got to say, Lord, teach me how to live holy. Teach me how to walk in righteousness. Teach me, Lord, how to walk out your word each day. And I believe that even in this Bible study tonight, as we've ascended from the mountains of glory, I believe that even in this Bible study tonight, God has opened this space for somebody's second chance. God has opened this space for somebody to come to the end of themselves and say, Lord, I'm wrong. I've got it all messed up. <laughs> I want you to lift your hands and I'm finished I want you to say Lord as a matter of fact I don't even want you to repeat after me but out of your mouth just give God a fresh yes a fresh renewal because yesterday's bread is gone but give us this day our daily bread. Will we renew our yes to you, Jesus? Ooh. Not for form or fashion, but we renew our yes to you, Jesus. Mm. We renew our yes to you, Jesus. say yes Lord we say yes Lord will you clap your hands and give God praise
come on, clap your hands. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. We're preparing to give unto the Lord. We're preparing to give unto the Lord um, that which he's given to us. Get your seeds, your tithes, your offerings, whatever you're going to give. And we're going to give unto the Lord and we're going home. <laughs> Amen. And when you have what you're going to give, will you stand to your feet as we make our declaration of faith? With a loud and believing voice, will you raise it up and say, I am free of debt. My needs are met. My desires considered. My worries are withered. I cheerfully give. For God I live. I am in great health and abounding in wealth. Lord, we thank you for every person that is giving today, either by phone or by cash or however. And I pray, God, that you will give seed to the sower. Lord, bless us and we shall be blessed in the name of Jesus. Lord, you promised you would rebuke the devourer for our sakes. And we praise you even now, Lord, for Malachi 310 blessing for you did promise, Lord, that you would open up the windows of heaven. I pray, God, tonight, Lord, that you would bless these, your people in Jesus' name. Uh, you can bring your gifts at this time. Stand to your feet. We're going home. We're going home. Do we have any upcoming announcements? Oh. Church anniversary is the second Sunday in April. Um, and then... Um, for the members of Truth and Worship, you know that you've been asked um, to pay that last 50 for church anniversary. Uh, I believe that's all that I can think of for now, anyway. All right. And per Elder Bijan, next Tuesday, we're bringing back uh, youth and young adult Bible study. Amen. Clap your hands. Amen. Thank the Lord. We're going home, uh, but before we go home, uh, can we wish Deacon Deborah a happy birthday? <laughs> I would sing, but I'm hollered. I've hollered enough, so I'm good. Uh, with uplifted hands, Lord, we thank you tonight, God, for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard. And I pray, God, tonight, Lord, that you will bless these, your people. Help us, God, to walk out your word, to be obedient to your will. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Consider yourselves dismissed.